I'm sure you've been uh, reading the Telegraph carefully and closely as everybody else has. What do you think about the revelations today? Well, I think what they show is that uh, we in the House of Commons were excluded from what should have been very important discussions and the opportunity to scrutinise what the government was doing. And the government contrived to prevent us doing that by not using the Civil Contingencies Act, but by using legislation which prevented us receiving the information which we would have needed to enable us to uh, scrutinise and analyse what the government was doing. We can now see that the government uh, was acting without uh, taking proper, uh, in, in getting in proper information uh, from experts on these issues, and it was it was acting on the hoof, really. When, when you say uh, you legislation, I mean, I thought you were going to say the government contrived to act in this way using WhatsApp as a kind of instant communicator in lieu of the traditional way of, you know, breaking um, problems and issues to MPs in the House and, and, and the normal kind of system of debate and disclosure. I thought you were going to say it was WhatsApp. You said it was legislation. What do you mean? Well, well, well uh, what we should have had was the, if we'd had the Civil Contingencies Act in an emergency, as then the government wouldn't have been able to act without approval from the House of Commons. Right. Um, unless it had actually gone to MPs and been able to show that what it was doing was proportionate and reasonable in restricting freedom in the circumstances. Right. And it didn't do that. And it didn't produce what were called regulatory impact assessments. So that it, it didn't do that. And then, of course, having not done that, it was free uh, to engage in secret WhatsApp uh, government uh, which I think is absolutely an appalling uh, revelation and it makes the House of Commons seem completely superfluous. I'm, I'm wondering if were Matt Hancock here to explain or defend himself, I don't think he'd accept an invitation to do so today unfortunately, but if he were, whether he would say it was a pandemic. The heat was on. You know, never before has a government been under such time pressure. So we couldn't go through the normal motions and strictures and protocols. What we had to do was rush all of this through because lives stood stood at stake if we didn't if we didn't hurry up and get on with it. Would that be what the government would say to excuse or explain this, do you think? Well, they, 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 they might say that, but it would be a very lame excuse because the Civil Contingencies Act uh, was developed to deal with issues such as uh, wars. Mm. And uh, what, what it does is it enables the government to act uh, quickly, if, if need be, but it has to justify acting and to restrict liberty of the individual uh, without justification. And by uh, sidestepping that requirement, the government was then able to impose uh, these... Uh, lockdowns and behave in the way that it did in the in the schools and ignore the evidence and the advice and the scrutiny of the house of commons and what, and, what and to and to what do you ascribe the government's haste you might say you may not but 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 i might say haste to close schools down and and lock children down at home and mean that children now so many years later are are are, are behind and children whose social development has been you know um deeply uh, set back by all of this why did the government decide to do this without the due deference and reference to members of uh, of the house of commons would you say well because it's always much easier for governments to proceed without having to have scrutiny we often see ministers reluctant to come to the House of Commons. And I, I think that they take advantage of the lack of scrutiny. And that's what happened in this case. And essentially what happened was that the, the panic mongers in the health service, uh, the people who didn't really put much of a price on individual freedom and liberty, they were ran, ran rampant and uh, prevented people going to school. And we're now picking up the tab of five or six billion pounds is the cost of trying to restore the educational opportunities that were taken away. And even that is not going to actually uh, restore them completely. So it was a very, very expensive um, episode. And I'm delighted that the true nature of what happened is now being revealed. Why? Why are you delighted? What will it achieve, the fact that it's been revealed? Well, with any luck, it will ensure that never again do we have a situation where the House of Commons is bypassed and that the 1984 Public Health Act um, is ab abused in a way that it was this time. 
and people much more, more knowledgeable about the law than, than me, like, like um, the um, Jonathan Sumption, Lord Sumption, uh, have, have made this point very clearly. So if, if we achieve that, then at least we'll have some safeguards in the future that our liberties won't be uh, mucked around in the way that they were this time without any say from the House of Commons. Could it be said that, like the journalist Isabel Oakeshott, who made these WhatsApp messages available to the Telegraph as she co-wrote Matt Hancock's Pandemic Diaries and then used the information he'd given her and released it to the Telegraph, saying it was in the public interest, she's said to be, by those who know her and have heard her speak on many occasions, occasions a lockdown skeptic she's you know deeply opposed to lockdown um are you the same do you share the same opinion well i i i, I voted against uh, lockdown at every opportunity apart from the first initial one because i thought that i bought into the idea that the health service and the hospitals weren't prepared but subsequent to that um i voted against uh, all the lockdowns and against the mask wearing and uh, every time i had the opportunity uh, but that doesn't make me ill-qualified to say that what we needed was uh, proper information. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't imply that it did make you ill-qualified. I just wanted to know if you were anti or pro-lockdown. May I ask you why? Why did you vote against lockdown at every opportunity? Why did you vote against mask wearing? If we remember how frightened so many of us were of dying, frightened of our parents dying, frightened of dying ourselves, not wanting to be one of those patients, God forbid, taken into intensive care in one of those gigantic Nightingale hospitals, never to be seen again, never to have even had your beloved loved ones at your bedside. You know, we were scared, most of us very frightened, at least for a, a, a some of the time. Why were you busily at that point voting well, against I think, I lockdowns? Think the, the, the use of fear as a, as a weapon by governments against individuals is extremely uh, powerful. I, I've always been uh, pretty sceptical and wanted to see the evidence before I was prepared to vote for people's freedom to be restricted. The evidence wasn't forthcoming. And now, as things are revealed, it's clear that the government didn't have any justification for a lot of this lockdown. And indeed, they will need to be held to account. And at the moment, the government's taking the line, well, let's wait for the outcome of an inquiry. But uh, I think uh, that something's going to happen sooner as a result of from, these revelations. Apart from the death toll and the rising figures that we remember being given to us every night on the television news, people who died, you remember the phrase, with COVID, we were never told to say of COVID, but those people who died with with COVID and the numbers grew and grew, what other evidence would you have needed to think that a pandemic that was enormously infectious and contagious would be contained if people didn't mix with one another, so therefore lockdown was the right response to it? What would you have needed to see to convince you that that was the case? Well, I, I, I don't know what I would have needed. I would have needed some hard evidence from uh, medics and i had people in my constituency medics in my constituency who were telling me that um, the the government had got this all wrong and i was i i listened to them that caused me to be a uh, skeptical uh, about it and I, I never bought into the idea that we should be wearing masks i didn't think of any hard evidence that that was of any value i was skeptical about the this issue about uh, transmission and we've now been shown that the assertion that by being vaccinated you uh, then weren't able to transmit uh, covid that's been proved to have been uh, wrong and, and so we go on uh, and d does that mean you're anti-vax as well no, I'm not anti-vax at all. Right. I'm indeed, I, 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 but I'm not anti-vax at all. But what I am in 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 favour of is ensuring that the public are properly informed about these issues before they um, are deprived of their liberties. Very it's often, not, very, very often, though, uh, Sir Christopher, as you know, um, a line such as that used by the government, we are following the science, is deeply misleading whether the government follows it or not. Because as you know, and I know, and everybody listening to this has grown up enough to know, there's no such thing as the science. There's such a thing as many different scientists, all different <laughs> sorts of research. And as in every possible issue, political, theological, poetical, or anything else, it's possible to choose the result that you like and the one that's suits your particular pet theory and therefore the idea of empirical evidence that would show you yes absolutely everyone must wear a mask without fear of uh, any kind of contradiction by any scientific faction anywhere is, is is never going to appear on anyone's desk is it no but the starting point surely should be that um english people and indeed everybody in the united kingdom is free and that they are free to do what they wish 
and their liberties should only be restricted or removed with overwhelming evidence from the government that that is essential and proportionate. And that evidence was never forthcoming. It was suppressed. And now we can see that there wasn't any evidence to justify much of these, many of these lockdown measures. I appreciate your joining me on the programme. Thank you very much indeed for doing so. Sir Christopher Chope.